Here we are by the scene of the Heilige Bene Yisoscha. Sadiqut Tzvi Eli Melech, Skusun Yugin Alaini, a holy spot, Mokan Kodosh, which as we've said many times in different places, we find from the Svarim HaKadoshim, when a person is a is in a mockum of the scene of a tzaddik, it's almost like he's in there to stroll. So Admas Kodesh, it's a, a holy place. So we'll just spend a few minutes understanding a little bit more, maybe say a Maisa, from the Heilige Bnei Yisoscha. The different Chaim of sons is known to be very makbid, the sperm that he learned at the specific times. The different Chaim of sons was one time looking at the Bnei Soscha, and it was specifically before Tkiah Shaifa. It was on Rosh Hashanah, and it was before Tkiah Shaifa. And there he was, the different Chaim, the Heilige Divrei Chaim, looking into the safe of the Bnei Yisoscha. And afterwards, they had a Bissel Chutzpah, they said, Rebbe, why were you looking at the safe of the Bnei Yisoscha? Right by Tkiah Shaifa, but before Tkiah Shaifa, that's the Zman. People are busy with the Zoya, with Kavonas. What's the Bnei Yisoscha? Father, we knew it was a Gavaldika Sefer, but why now? The Vichayim said, Dauke HaKodesh, I read from Sfarim that were written by Ruach HaKodesh. So we have our scum of the Heidegger De Vichayim that the Bnei Sos was written, he understood, he lived with Ruach HaKodesh. There was a Yid in Yeshiva in Yerushalayim. Had gone through some troubled times, difficult situations, very, very difficult upbringing. And he had left Yiddishkeit, wasn't interested in really having shaykhs to Yiddishkeit. <laughs> he went to a yeshiva in Yerushalayim for boys in that specific situation. And they took the boys to Poland. Poland, okay, we'll go to Poland. We'll go to some kvarim, we'll go to some camps. That's what you do, we'll do it also. They came to this very place. And they were standing where we're standing right now. This boy, together with his whole yeshiva. I heard this from the Rosh Yeshiva that was there at the time. And as they're standing by the cave, by right here, by the Bnei Yisoscha, one of the Rebbeim says to the boy, what's your name again? So he told him his name. And his name ended Shapira. He said, maybe you're related. He made a few phone calls on the spot made some phone calls into America. He called a few people and he found that he was a Ben Acha Ben from the Bnei Yisoscha. He had no idea. We're talking long hair. We're talking, you know, earrings all over the place. Unbelievable. And he was standing in this Mokoim and it was in this exact Mokoim that he was Mekabal, Torah or Mitzvahs. He was taking off his hair. He was taking off all of his earrings. He was being shown as Shabbos. He was changing his entire life around because of the place that he was. Yes, he was an Einikel, he was a Ben Achaben. But this Rabbi Sai is a place where people have changed around, where people have turned themselves around. It's a place that every single one of us, we all know ourselves. The Gemara says, Lave your day Mara Snafsha. We know where we're holding. We know what we do. We know what we don't do. We know what we should be doing. This is the place that many people have done this. And it's our opportunity. And they hear the Mokim of a Tzaddik, the Halik of an to close our eyes and to think about our lives and to think about where we could be, where we should be, and what we should be doing, as many other Yidden have done in this place. We'll end with one Mordek HaMaisa. Every night, the Halik of an Eisoscha would be Oisik in the Avoida of Tikkun Chatzois. Tikkun Chatzois, he would sit for hours crying and crying and crying over the Horbim Beis Amikdosh in a shul very close to where I'm standing right now here in Dinav. And it was dark, there was no one around. And the Heilige Bnei Sosra would sit on a small, low stool and he would cry and he would cry. The tears wouldn't stop until it was time to start davening Shachwis. And he never missed it. And he used to say, the Bnei Sosra used to say that when the Shechina is lying trampled in the dust, how can a person have the audacity to be comfortably resting and sleeping in bed at that time? Never did the Bnei Yisoscha miss this Indian of Tikkun Chatzois. But there was one night. And one night, the Hasidim are standing and sitting around their Rebbe, the Bnei Yisoscha. He's talking Torah. He's been the Oilam. And it was getting later and later. 
the Hasidim were noticing that the clock was getting closer and closer towards 12 o'clock. It was getting towards Chatzois. Any minute now, the Rebbe Yisachar, the Rebbe is going to stand up and say, I'm sorry, Rabbi Isai, I need to go to my private room. I need to go and go and talk to the Rabbi Nishalem and be upset and be sad and be sour over not having a base on Mikdash. They were just waiting for him to get up and he did not get up. And he kept on talking and giving Torah and being a chazik the oilam. Chassidim were confused. They were looking at each other. What's going to be? Do you think can it be that the Rebbe missed Tikkun Chatzois? Is the Rebbe so involved in the sugya? That he doesn't know that it's right now, right before Chatzos, the clock is about to turn 12. And the B'nai Yisrael is still sitting here, it doesn't make any sense. All eyes were turned towards the Rebbe, the B'nai Yisrael. And suddenly, the clock hits 12, it's Chatzos, and the Rebbe is still sitting. The Chassidim couldn't believe it. How can it be that the Rebbe is still sitting here at that time? And as the clock strikes 12, the B'nai Soscha, who everyone is looking, wondering what's going on, why is today different than every other day, ignores the chimes that he hears so clearly of the clock striking 12. And he starts to say, Rabbi Isa, I want to tell the Olam Amaisa. And the Rebbe starts to speak. And the Rebbe says that there was a wealthy man, a tremendously wealthy man. He starts to describe vividly in all colors and descriptions of his household, his servants, his money, all of the culture, everything that he had, such a wealthy, wealthy man. But came one day, as we know, the wheel of fortune turns around. And the day came when he made a bad business deal. And once he made this bad business deal, one thing led to another thing. And then all of a sudden, he was all over the place. He lost all of his money. He ended up selling all of his possessions, moving out of his home. He had lost everything. In the beginning, it was okay. People felt bad for him. They had Rahmanus on him. So they used to give him food, they used to give him money, they helped him out. But after a few years, everybody forgot about his previous status of being wealthy. And he was all alone, all by himself. And he goes traveling around from city to city, from town to town, with whatever he can, a meal here, a Shabbos over here, whatever he can have. There was one Friday night that he's sitting in the shul. And he's sitting in the Bismedrash, hoping he's going to get a meal. And he sees one by one after davening, everybody's leaving, everybody's leaving, and he's left without a meal. He has in his pocket some crusts, some bread. He makes Kiddush. And his Shabbos Suda is over in about a half a minute to a minute. And he cries up to the Rabbi Nishalaylam. And he says, Rabbi Nishalaylam, I see that your situation is no better than mine. We also had a Beis Amikdash. We also had the Shechina. But we're missing it. We're poor, we're nothing, we're alone. We don't have the Shechina. And then the Hasidim understood that the Bnei Yisrosa didn't miss Tikkun Chatzois. He was just bringing everyone together with him into his Tikkun Chatzois. But Boisai, we're in such a highly good place, such a special place. We're in a place of a tzaddik that was able to write Baruch HaKodesh. This is our opportunity. We're all familiar with people that need Yeshua's, whether it's in Parnosa, whether it's in health, whether it's in Shalom Bayes, whether it's with the children, whether it's with Shidduchim, whatever it may be, we know people. We know the matzah that Klali souls in. We know the situation. There are soldiers going out there day in and day out, risking their lives. We know what's going on with the people of Israel and around the world. This is our opportunity to bespal on not only for ourselves, for our futures, for our mishpachas, but for all of Klali Yisrael. And remember, the Heilige Bnei Sascha, was so makusha, was so connected to Hanukkah. Hanukkah, the Oris of Hanukkah. The Oris of Hanukkah are still with us in this place. This is a place where you can feel the Hanukkah. And Hanukkah, of course, is as we've spoken so many times, is about the light within the darkness when it's so dark and it's so cold and it's so depressing and it's so sad and life has so many challenges. And it's so difficult to be able to continue within that darkness. But we have that Hanukkah light. We have the beautiful light of the Hanukkah Nevis. That's Hanukkah. That's the Bnei Soscha. It was Megala, the light of Hanukkah in our generation. And therefore the light of Hanukkah is oil over here. It's light over here. There could be darkness going on around the world and there's tremendous darkness. But our job over here is to ignite that light and to be able to keep it inside it. How many people change their lives in this very place? Every single one of us should be Zoycha Be'ezus Hashem Yisbarak to be Mispalo for ourselves for our mishpacha and for all the Kalal Yisrael to have a Yeshua and we should be zaycha all together 
to dance together with the Bnei Yisroschan, all of the other tzaddikim, together with the Binyan Bayi Shlishi Ibn Heir of Yameinu Amen.